Bengal, three houses collapsed at Valmiki Colony in Hubli due to heavy rains. The heavy rains also continued in the twin cities of Hubli and Dharwad. The cities received downpour for over two hours. A house has collapsed at Manchnath Nagar after water from the Unkal Lake entered into it. And as you can see, there are large-scale damage being reported from Hoopley. And houses have come crashing down. This is right next to a lake. And considering that their houses are built on that particular embankment, it looks like uh, since the water level increased, it entered their homes and led uh, to the foundation crumbling. The roofs have come collapsing down. And uh, several houses have been damaged. Similarly, of course, uh, nobody was injured. Fortunately, everyone did manage to escape before this. But it is understood that uh, the heavy rains which went on for about two hours uh, led to quite a bit of chaos and uh, meanwhile however in Chitra Durga rains brought smiles to farmers who have prepared their fields the district has been receiving heavy rains since Wednesday night and it continued to drizzle today as well and uh, in Raichur it looks like life came to an absolute standstill as uh, they were completely unprepared for uh, the heavy rains uh, which led to a lot of uh, drains overflowing it led to a lot of drains bursting as well as quite some flooding so uh, quite a bit of chaos being uh, witnessed there however it looks like uh, there are both pros and cons to the rain as uh, farmers are delighted that uh, the ongoing drought has finally come to an end uh, with a great amount of rain uh, in these particular areas in fact we understand that the rains could continue uh, for the next few hours as well as maybe a couple of days this is keeping in mind that the monsoons have just arrived in Kerala so it's inevitable that Karnataka will also face as uh, some amount of rains from the same and scientists have made a startling revelation as far as monsoons in Kerala are concerned while many think that it could be because of a depression in Arabian Sea there is something much more serious is global warming causing heavy rain? Top scientists in the country have revealed that global warming could be the reason for heavy rains in Kerala. Kerala, the gateway of monsoon into the mainland of the country, has experienced heavy rains over the last few days, three weeks ahead of the arrival of South Asia's southwesterly monsoon. The State Disaster Management Authority has confirmed that unabated rainfall has already done sufficient damage to crops and farming in the state. 18 people dead, loss amounting to 250 crores. With the crop destruction alone pegged at 20 crore rupees, the unexpected rain has caused destruction across the state, leaving the total loss at 250 crore rupees. While the sudden showers are being attributed to warming of ocean water, which is the direct effect of global warming, scientists believe that the alarming temperature pattern could result in below average rainfall. A deep depression oversea is the reason for summer rains. I cannot say whether global warming is responsible for deep depression. However, I can say that we can link the intensified summer rains to global warming. India is expected to see below normal monsoon this year with Met Department forecasting 95% rainfall because of the El Nino effect, which is generally associated with the warming of ocean water. A new stand report. Well, many greats such as Dr. B.R. Ambedkar M. Vishweshwaraya have achieved great heights in life despite coming from humble backgrounds. He has a report on two people who have performed exceptionally well in the PU exams despite their modest background. This is a slum in Lokapura in Bagal Court. And you will be surprised to know that this is a home to two toppers in the PU exams. Meet Ramesh Chinnaparudreshi and Manjunath Rudreshi. They are not brothers, but are wards of parents belonging to a community of nomads. This duo has passed the PU exam with 91%, much to the delight of their family members. They are students of Alva's College in Moodabidri. The two top scorers want to continue studying in the same college since they have both been offered benefits for their efforts. Ramesh says that the hardships he was up against helped him focus on his goals. But Ramesh says 
ಬಟ್ ಆ ಒಂದು ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ನನಗೆ ನೋಡಿ ನನಗೆ ನಾನು ಆ ಥರ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಹೋದರೆ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಸಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಕಷ್ಟದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಸ್ ಆದೆ ಏಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಸರ್ ಮಂಜುನಾಥ್ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅ ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಆಫೀಸರ್ ಟು ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ದ ಪುವ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಸಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಓದಿದ್ರೆ ಚಲೋ ಚಲೋ ಓದಿದ್ರಿ ಸರ್ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಇಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಬಡವರು ಇದ್ದಾರಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ನಾನು ಓದಿ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಅಣ್ಣರು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಹೋದರೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಆಗ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸರ್ ಮತ್ತು ನನ್ನಿಂದ ಭಾಳ ಭಾಳ ಬಡವರು ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ಅವರಿಗೆಲ್ಲ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹ ಕೊಡಬೇಕು ಮುಂದೆ ಕಲಿತು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಆಫೀಸರ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ದೊಡ್ಡ ಆಫೀಸರ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಸರ್ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ದ ಟೂ ಟಾಪರ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರೂ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ರೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ಮಂಜುನಾಥ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಮೇಶಸ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ ಸೆಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅರ್ನ್ ದೇರ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಬೈ ಬೆಗಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಿವ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಅ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಓವರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈವ್ಡ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸೋ ದ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಕುಡ್ ಲಿವ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಲೈಫ್ಸ್ ದ ಡೂ did not let down their parents the parents of both boys say that they used to study for at least 8 hours a day and during exam time the boys studied for 12 hours overwhelmed family members attribute their success to hard work the boys now hope to achieve more in life with the motivation they possess their goals may not be out of reach suresh nayak news 9 bagalkot I must slip into a short break at this point but do stay tuned news and updates will continue on the other side Admiration comes naturally with the Renault Duster Welcome back. Well, Nigeria is sparing no effort to rescue the two 76 girls abducted at gunpoint about a month back by a rebel outfit called Boko Haram. Even as many celebrities joined the crusade to find the girls, Malala Yousafzai too joined the campaign and had a message to convey. Boko Haram hasn't studied Islam. Yes, that is what the advocate for girls' right to education, Malala Yousafzai, had to say about the rebel outfit Boko Haram and their idea of Islam. They are extremists and they don't really understand Islam. They are actually misusing the name of Islam or even abusing the name of Islam because they have forgotten that the word Islam means peace. Malala's suggestion to the extremist group came after the head of Boko Haram released a video in which he said that Allah instructed him to sell the girls in the human market. Boko Haram translates into English as Western education is sinful. In light of that, these rebels had abducted over 300 girls at gunpoint from a school where these girls had appeared for an exam despite security threats. However, a few girls managed to escape from the group's clutches by jumping out of the truck while the extremists were taking them to an unknown location. Malala is known worldwide for her bravado and has been fighting hard for women's right to education. This incident saddened her and she said that the abducted girls were like her sisters in prison. Not just that, the girl took the rebels head on and said that they should read the Holy Quran thoroughly before striking terror and claiming what Allah has instructed them to do. So girls in Nigeria are my sisters and it's my responsibility that I speak up for my sisters. The first word that was revealed on Prophet peace be upon him was Iqra and Iqra means read. It's, it's a message of getting knowledge, of getting education. So how can they deny this fact? that Islam gives a message to us that you should go and get knowledge and get education. So I think they haven't studied Islam yet, they haven't studied Quran yet, and they should go and they should learn Islam. Many have reacted to the incident, but Malala's reaction comes as a message, or rather a suggestion to the rebels, who have now asked for an unspecified ransom from the Nigerian government, failing which Boko Haram has threatened to sell these girls to slavery for a mere sum of seven pounds. A News 9 report. Well, the day is not too far when four persons from our planet will be sent to Mars. And one or two among the four might also be Indians. Wondering how? Well, here's a report. Mars One selection process has eliminated 353 persons from the list of settlers that will be sent to the Red Planet. 705 people shortlisted to be sent to Mars. 44 Indians among the shortlisted. Among the 44 Indians, 17 are women. 
These aspirants belong from major cities like New Delhi, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Kolkata, Pune and Tiruvananthapuram. This is not the final number as only four finalists will be sent to Mars. These people will further have to undergo another round of interview. We are incredibly excited to start the next phase of round 2 where we begin to better understand our candidates who aspire to take such a daring trip. They will have to show their knowledge, intelligence, adaptability and personality. After the second round of interview, the candidates will be grouped into international teams of four members consisting of two men and two women. These teams will then be given extensive training which will help them to settle in Mars. However, all the 705 candidates will have to complete two tasks after completing their second round of interview. First, they will have to provide a medical certificate and second, make their online Mars One applicant profile public. Meet the expected Mars settlers. Starting from students to engineers and professors and housemakers, these 44 people are a bunch of variety from across the country. With different interests and dreams in their eyes, these people are all gearing up to go to the red planet. Zareen Chima 18-year-old Zareen is a mechanical engineering student and perhaps the youngest among all. Zareen is an avid reader of space books and loves traveling. She has envisioned this journey a million times in her dreams and seems to be determined in fulfilling her ambition. Chennai Blood Winnows Chennai boy Vinod is a district level cycling champion. The 19 year old boy, who is presently pursuing his BE degree from Welltech Multitech Engineering College, also loves adventure sports apart from cycling. Sudha Ayer. Another woman among this bunch of people is 41 year old Sudha Ayer. A technology program manager by profession, Sudha considers herself to be a socially and environmentally responsible and peace-loving person. The curiosity about how things work is the main reason for Sudha in choosing to travel all the way to the Red Planet. I'm hoping to contribute to the wonderful Mars One team by bringing a useful and perhaps unique skill to the table. Sarfaraz Khan Sarfaraz from India 28-year-old NRI Sarfaraz graduated from the UK University. Currently working for a US firm as a software engineer in the States, Sarfaraz believes that he can be of significant help to this mission. His interests include playing chess, video games and listening to music among others. Vinod Kotia Hi, this is Vinod Kotia. New Delhi resident Vinod Kotia is a father of a one-year-old daughter. He is presently working in a company as a project manager and loves traveling around remote places. His other interests include trekking and watching movies. His interest to know the secrets of the universe has led him take this crucial decision in settling in another planet. Well, these are just a few among the 44 Indians who have been shortlisted. The others also share thoughts and interests similar to the ones we just showed. But who among these will have the final laugh is yet to be known. A News 9 report.